the host come on make his house and captain Jesus in this place. Glorify the name of Jesus in this place. Glorify the name of Jesus. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. Let me get the church. Come on. Sing it again. Oh, be lifted. Say it. Church, oh, we lift it, oh, we lift it, oh, we lift it, yes. we lay a crown, we lay a crown, we worship you, come on, believe us, say, oh, glorious God, yes.
children, in our lives, in our marriage, in our finances, in anything that concerns us. Will you put those hands together onto Jesus? Come on. You can add a shout to it if you came with your voice. Will you put your hands together and shout? How many of you are excited to be on the third night and in the third night of the conference? How many of you are excited to be here? And how many of you are expectant? You can be excited and not expectant. How many of you came with those two things in your hands? You are excited and you are expectant at the same time. How many of you? Come on, if you came as excited and as an expectant person as I am, will you put your hands together? Let's give God a celebration that is due His holy name. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you look for seven people and welcome them to the Maker's house? Come on, welcome seven people. Tell them you are welcome to experience 2019. Now, before I do any other thing, um, I still want to do my double double. You know, he did not come tonight. Okay, that's fine. He came? All right, that's fine. I still want to do that. But I want you to pick up your phones. Everybody. Go on your phone. Go on Instagram. Go on Twitter. While the song is going on, I want you to take your best shot and hashtag experience 2019. Are you with me? Pick up your phones. Be on Instagram. Be on Twitter. Be on Snapchat. And whilst that double-double is going on, oh my goodness, I, I want you to hashtag experience 2019. Are you ready for this? Help me. I, I am waiting for you on WhatsApp, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Snapchat, on Facebook. Come on, let's do it. Somebody give the Lord a shout! Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor! Neighbor! Jesus has given me victory. So I'm going to do some talk around for my neighbor now. Give the Lord a shout! All the days of my life I pray to Everything that I have now you give to me, Baba. Lord, I say for your love, I'm grateful. Just you love me plenty, you came to die for me. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, I am that I am. Ooh, oh, I search around, there's no one else like you. Lion of Judah, you're the mighty, mighty battle. He has given me the grace. The lion. Hallelujah! 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 H
done for me. He has taken away my sorrow, then I am free. I got my hallelujah, Buru. I got my hallelujah, Buru. Because of this, I don't worry, then I shall go on. Oh, double, double, heavenly blessings, now he must be ready. Ah, eh, God, the grace of me is all in. Holy Spirit, I say. Come on, give God a shout of praise in the house. Well, um, yesterday we said that our shout, um, if, if you picked up an envelope last night, could you please bring, can I please be seated? If you picked an envelope last night, could you please bring it? So we pray for you. You picked an envelope last night. How I wish we will run here so we can get this over with quickly. If you picked up an envelope when Pastor Miller was ministering and he, yeah, let's come, let's pray with you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you also picked an envelope when Dr. Lawrence Tetter also spoke on Monday um, after Pastor Miller had preached, you can still join. Father, thank you, Holy Ghost. We lay this on the altar with a revelation that fire will not fall on an empty altar. Therefore, even as we lay our sacrifices, on your altar, let the fire of you, our God, consume and bring us the results that you've spoken to us about. There is no way this will go unnoticed. May this be recorded, O oh God, in the book of remembrance, that when there is a need your people will have, this will be a conduit, O oh God, a platform, a way and a reference point, Father, to visit, bless, transform and turn things around the mighty name of our lord jesus this and many more we have asked for the name of the one who rules reigns and has regency christ jesus the son of the living god we have prayed amen please place it on the altar and you can go back hallelujah clap your hands for them if it is good to give towards the work of god not just pledge, but also honor or redeem them. This is a fresh altar. And uh, your fresh sacrifices will serve you well. We have been blessed by the ministry of Pastor Jonathan Miller yesterday and the day before. I thought you were excited, but he's going to be in the service before he flies out anyway. Um, today, God has also honored us, blessed us. Um, well, 
before I, before I go on that tangent, um, allow me to taxi before we take off. Uh, we have in our midst a very good friend and brother of mine for many years, Pastor Michael Aoche and the wife from CEM. They are here. Come on, give, give it up unto them. We have Bishop Prince in the house. We have Pastor Elisha in the house. We have Bishop Osu and Sai in the house. We have the nation's prophet in the house. Prophet Isaac Osu Bempa is in the house. We are super excited to have you. We have our in-house people. We have Reverend BH um, in the house. We have Pastor Alex and the wife. We have Pastor Maswell and Pastor Julius from the UK. Of course, we have Bishop Elizabeth. Um, we have Pastor Obed, Dr. Sarkodie. We have Pastor Justice, Pastors Eric and Lady Gifty. Um, we have Bishop Grace in the house. And I have my girlfriend in the house. My wife, my lovely, lovely, awesome, amazing, gorgeous, beautiful, prolific, profound, exquisitely enchanting, an amazing woman. Um, oh, yeah. God has also blessed me. Um, we have Bishop Ankoma in the house the resident bishop of the Victory Bible Church. And today we are, we are honored to have one of my old men that I, when I need counsel, I run to. We have Bishop Takia Boy in the house. <laughs> bishop, I think you should bring them greetings. It will not be right. Hallelujah. Well, the Queen of Sheba said, I heard of it. But when I got there, it was beyond what I heard. Being here and seeing what God has done, I want to say, may God bless you. And may God give you more grace. I'm very happy for you, and I know that this is like a platform, because the original is yet to come. God bless you. Oh, come on, let's give a shout of praise and a clap offering unto God for the life of this man seven. All right, please be seated. A video was going, um, a picture was going viral of me following the great man that is going to speak to us today. When I was very tiny and people, it's like people sent that picture to me deliberately as if they want to say, see how little you were. Well, I keep saying that it is only wise for you to follow giants because it is the automatic passport into becoming a great person yourself. A man I have grown to know, love, consider as a father of mine. Um, I love him to the T. Genuine, sincere, loving, kind, genuine, authentic. The next voice you hear after the video announcement will be no other but the one and only Reverend Eastwood. Reverend Eastwood Anaba is the president of the Eastwood Anaba Ministries, headquartered at Bolgatanga in the Upper East region of Ghana, with mission centers in Accra, London, and the United States of America. 
He is also the founder of Fountain Gate Chapel. He is a graduate pharmacist from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Reverend Eastwood has a strong desire for the manifestations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the power of God in the body of Christ. He has authored over 90 books, including his bestsellers, The Love Revolution and The Quest for Supremacy. He and his wife, Rosemond, live with their children in Bogotonga. Reverend Eastwood has a busy schedule taking the gospel to several nations of the world. The prophecy is in an earthen vessel. The gift is in an earthen vessel. The anointing is in an earthen vessel. I pray, may God give you access to the anointing. I said, may God give you access to the anointing. The value of the supernatural you don't know the value of prophecy you don't know the value of the word of knowledge you don't know the value of the word of wisdom you don't know the value of the gifts of healings you don't know the value of the gift of deliverance you don't know the value of the gift of faith and the gift of the working of miracles you don't know the value Church, with a standing ovation and a clap onto God, please welcome Reverend Eastwood Anaba. Praise the Lord. Why don't you lift up your hands to Jesus now? Give him praise. Somebody come and thank him tonight. Worship him. Give him the glory. Mm. We've come to draw. 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 Draw from you again, yeah, yeah. We've come to draw, 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 draw from you again, yeah, yeah. We've come to draw, 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 draw from you again, yeah, yeah. I've come to draw, draw, draw. Draw from you again, yeah. yeah. Father, we give you all glory and honor. We ask that you touch our lives today. We pray that we fulfill your mandate, that your holy name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. What shall we say to these things? Just a few months ago, I came to this place, and the place was a bare ground. And then I got here, and I saw a wonder. Today, uh, I was telling a young man who was following me, I said, Ghanaians have to come to a place where they will be honest with the church. No, Ghanaians need some honesty. These are things governments cannot do. No, they can't, they can't do it. Listen. <laughs> if you take the cabinet of Ghana and give them months to do this, they cannot. You see? Give them Give them all the gold money, all the gold money, all the timber money, all the cocoa money. Tell them to build Omun to me. So I think 
in our cabinet, we need about five pastors. You see, instead of, instead of all these, these pastors are crooks, these pastors are charlatans, these pastors are this. You look at our works and look at your own. You understand what I'm saying? Listen, if this is what charlatans can do, then it's good to be a charlatan. <laughs> you know, but, 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 listen, 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 listen. Seriously, I think Ghanaians should have a rethink and rather come to us and ask us, how do you people do this in impossible economies? Today, when we were coming here and we we're driving, we, we got on some of the rough road. I asked myself, where can this road lead you to? And the road is leading you to paradise. So by the time you see that paradise, at the end of that road, nobody should tell you the hand of God is in it. One day, they came to a man and they said, give the praise to God. Because as for this man who said he healed you, he's a sinner. He said, since I was born, I've never seen a sinner open the eyes of the blind. But that's for the man you are talking about, whether he's a sinner or not. I don't know. But one thing I know is that some time ago, I was blind, but now I see. But you see, there are many things I don't know. But some time ago, I know that some time ago, this land was a bare ground. In the middle of nowhere, all of a sudden, suddenly, I'm walking in the place and I'm like, how is this possible? And you see, if the man of God was tall like me, I can understand. Because sometimes, oh, yeah, the, sometimes, yeah, the height to where we know If you, you know, today I was not sure whether he would not come to church wearing jeans and t-shirt. That's why I dressed like this. I didn't want the owner of the place to come in jeans and t-shirt and I appear in three-piece suit. So I told myself, sir, for you, me, pay me one why share or the t-shirt any jeans ever nante nante ha and to my mean shame jeans if you know me fetch her to be and now i mean this is this is sophistication clothed in simplicity Sophistication clothed in simplicity. The man is seriously sophisticated, but he's packaged in simplicity. And, and, and what an encouragement. What, what, what an encouragement. You know what? I want you to lift up your hand today. Pray for every pastor in Ghana, every pastor in Africa, Every pastor who is trying to lift up the kingdom of God and allow God to use them to build the kingdom of God, pray that every grace they need, every anointing they need to do things like this, that God will grant it unto them. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Ringa de bezagaboze gaboze gaboga. Rakatoshe kabia katabasa. Zilalama antene ne me kabia gada gabaha. 
Dino no mono ni mi kapiando rorobo sebo sentas. Si la la baja kata kaba kata kaba. We give you all praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Wonderful. Normally, when I'm going to preach, there are some friends who follow me. They are not human beings, they are books. No, I'm a serious writer. Tonight, when I finish with you and go back, I'm going to send three books to. Um, I'm going to ask my designer to send three of my books to the printer so that by, by next week they can start printing them. One of them is called the Jubilee. The other one is the Sons of Oil. And the third one is the Sons of Rest. So when I finish, that's what I'm going to do. I, I write. I love to write. Because you see, I just noticed that all the people who write their books live longer than them. So even Paul, he died and his letters to epistles, his letters or epistles to the Philippians and the Colossians are still with us. If you want to live long, write. Because long after you are dead and gone, your books will still be speaking. And every one of these books, I type every letter myself. I sit down, I take my computer, I type. Don't mind. And God gave me long fingers. So locating my keys is not a problem at all. This book is called For This Purpose. I'll preach from it today and tomorrow. So when I start talking, I will fall on any page of this book. When you get the book later on, you will know where I was. <laughs> so as soon as I start speaking, all you should remember is for this purpose. Okay. And then I have a book here, The Unclean Spirit with Purpose. When demons have purpose, how do they behave? I will not speak from here this week. I've talked about this so often that I'm now tired. But um, you should get this and read it. How a demon executed its purpose. And you will learn something. Then I have all sufficiency. Speak the word. Encounter with Jesus Christ. Fueling signs and wonders. And for those of you who have achieved things and witches and wizards are trying to kill you. <laughs> overcoming the spirit of envy. Securing the destinies of homes, ministries, businesses, and nations. That, that is um, another one. This lady... I think I like the way you are sitting. You can take this as a gift. Oh, that is the bishop, right? Wonderful. Wow. Wow, I think, and this is my wife's book. It is Woman Power. I should add that one to you, please. That is my wife's book. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. And um, the, way, the way I saw this gentleman clapping, I like the way you were clapping. You can take this. Some of you are shouting, but the books are finished. Are you a member of this church? No. Okay. Now, somebody say, for this purpose. Come on, shout it again, for this purpose. First John 3, 8, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Manifested Greek, phanerosis. To make evident, to make obvious, to appear. Every one of us here has appeared on earth for a purpose. And you must fulfill that purpose. And I pray that you will. The Son of God was manifested for a purpose. And that purpose was not an attractive purpose. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy. Now, if you stopped at destroy, I think it would help you more than reading the rest of the verse. 
For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy. You know, many times we think that men of God are called and good people are born only to build, but sometimes they are born to destroy. Look at you. You can't even clap. Listen. If you want to tell me how significant you are in life, show me what you destroyed. This building could never have been built until something was destroyed. You can never build a family until something is destroyed. For this, they said, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. So to even cleave to your wife, you must leave something. Let me ask you a question. What have you destroyed since you were born? God told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, you are born for this purpose, to pull down, to pluck down, to destroy. Then you build. Let it remain in your mind that, let it remain in your mind that in life, you must destroy something. And the anointing is not given only to build. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. May you receive an anointing to destroy. I like something Jesus said. He said, don't think that I came to the earth to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. You see, I, I like the way many Christians, when they are thinking about Jesus, they are just thinking about nice things. And that is because of the kind of songs we used to hear when we were children. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild, look upon the little child. So gentle Jesus, meek and mild. And the man went into a synagogue, took up canes and whips and, and scourge, and began to cane people. Gentle Jesus. Peter is speaking something, and Jesus doesn't like what Peter is saying. And he said, get thee behind me, Satan. Gentle Jesus. And Herod sent and said, go and arrest Jesus. And when they came, he said, go and tell that fox. Gentle Jesus. And when he's coming again, he's not coming with an air condition or a fan, with a sword in his mouth. Gentle Jesus. So the Jesus many of you are following is a myth. Myth. But the one I know confronts institutionalized leadership of his day. And he said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Woe unto you. I hear people say when he was on earth, he never cursed anybody. Yet I see him say, woe unto you, Chorazin. It will be better for you on the day of judgment than for Sodom and Gomorrah. He said he, he was never harsh. Every word he spoke was gentle. Yet I hear him say, whosoever shall commit, shall sin against one of these little ones, it will be better for you if a milestone was tied around your neck and you are thrown into the sea. Gentle Jesus. Gentle Jesus. Gentle Jesus. Gentle Jesus. You see, yesterday, he never said any harsh word to anybody. And he's walking with people on the road to Emmaus. And the people were behaving foolishly. And he said, oh, fools and slow of heart. <laughs> Gentle Jesus. <laughs> Listen to me. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus came to destroy, and the thing he has come to destroy are not the works of God, but the works of the devil. That means Jesus knew about a spirit personality on earth called the devil or diabolos. I like it when many people walk about thinking there's no devil. He says, say only good things, no devil. Only God is on earth, no devil. 
Jesus came to the earth, he was walking about. He said, where are the works of the devil? I came to destroy them. And then the writer of Acts, Luke, the doctor, said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And this devil, Jesus himself said, he comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. But in destroying the works of the devil, he did not use any atomic missiles. He didn't use any biological weapons. He didn't use a gun. He didn't use a sword. He used the agency of preaching the gospel under the power of the Holy Ghost. So I see him standing in a synagogue in the land of Israel. And one day when they gave him the scriptures to read, he took and opened to the book of Isaiah. Then he quoted it in Luke chapter 4, the verse number 18, 19. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus came and he preached. Jesus came and he preached. Jesus came and he preached. The greatest man that ever walked the earth, the greatest man that ever lived, the greatest man after whom the years of the of the of the years of the ages were named when they say bc it is before christ when they say ad it is after his death the greatest man that ever lived on earth after whom the years of the ages were named was not a lawyer he was not a politician he was not an engineer he was not a doctor he was not a physicist he was not an astronomist the greatest man that ever lived was a preacher when god wanted to destroy the works of the devil he did not send a philosopher he did not send a professor he did not send an intellectual he sent a preacher listen to me the greatest person in your family must be a preacher in your nation must be a preacher in your country must be a preacher the greatest man on earth must be a preacher when we have a preacher we are blessed that is why that is why that is why that is why the most attacked personalities in life are preachers and prophets in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the earth and God did not practice engineering. And God did not practice law to solve the problem. And God did not resort to politics to solve the problem. God said. And the people whose profession is to say are the preachers and the prophets. May God raise a preacher in your family. May God raise a preacher in your nation. May God raise a preacher in your community. If you can scream, you are receiving a preacher and a prophet in your life. Listen to me. We must not be ashamed of preachers. Paul told Timothy, he said, Timothy, don't be ashamed of me and my bones. Some of you are beginning to be ashamed of your pastors, ashamed of your churches, ashamed of your ministry. The world has given us the impression that these pastors are noise makers. They are a nuisance. They are here to disturb people. But let me tell you, the greatest blessing on the land is the preacher. I like something Jesus said. He said, into whatever city you go, when you are leaving, leave your peace there. The only people who are the carriers of peace, who can leave peace in a city, are preachers. Am I talking to somebody at all? May the preacher in you come alive. You may be a doctor, but there's a preacher in you. 
you may be a lawyer but there's a preacher in you anybody that is shouting your gift is coming alive in the name of the lord jesus christ the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach i looked in the bible and the only purpose of the anointing is to preach i like i like it when people say all these churches should be building schools all these churches they must be building schools are we ministry of education all these churches must build hospitals no our job is they shall lay their hands on the sick and the sick shall recover but is medicine bad no medicine is good but others will be doctors and they will build hospital listen division of labor the lawyer is a lawyer the doctor is a doctor the engineer is an engineer the professor is a professor the preacher is a preacher listen you are a lawyer you are a doctor you are an engineer and i've never said you are useless why do you think as a preacher i am useless when you come to bogatanga everything god has used me to do in bogatanga he didn't use my gift and my talent as a pharmacist I studied pharmacy for five years in tech. Five years is supposed it, it was supposed to be four years, but because of the Rollins Aluta, it became five. I did six form science, mm, physics, chemistry, mm, biology. Then I went and did the pharmacy. But when you come to Bogatanga today, everything you see, God has used me to do there, including a school with 1,300 children. I didn't do it because I'm a pharmacist. I did it because I'm a preacher. Listen to me. I came to advertise to you that the preacher is not a bad man. The preacher is not a distraction. The preacher is not a bad woman. The preacher is not a distraction. If there's a preacher in your family, we call the preacher forth. If you are a preacher, may you rise up and preach. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. We are preachers. We are prophets. Come on, scream like your voice is yours and praise. God, God saw that the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and God said, God said, let there be light. I was telling our church yesterday, I said, Minyaya, and Katama, Medicine of Pharmacy, and Kamilisme of Theology, and Kebuam. But now I'm too old. No reverse gear. I said, if I had known what I know, I have written 90 books. Three are going tonight. That makes it 93. But you know what? Wherever I take these books to, no matter how inspired they are, if I take it to a school of theology, they will ask, what is his theological background? And the answer is zero. <laughs> 93 books, no background. So you know what? The purpose the books should have served, they will not serve that purpose. Because many people will reject my books on the face value of the fact that he didn't go to Bible school. And it's not their fault. Because I don't speak Aramaic, I don't speak Hebrew, I don't speak Greek. I've not learned any of these languages. So many of the things I may even teach 
A scholar can listen to me and say he is not very good hermeneutical. Listen, I want to encourage those of you who are young, 30 years and below, and God is calling you to be a preacher. May you be a preacher with pride. Be proud to be a preacher. Be proud to be a prophet. Be proud to be an evangelist. Be proud to be a pastor. Be proud to be a teacher of the word of God. If you can scream it, the blessing of... Come on, shout it! Listen! And memory! Nyami Fred! Now call Bible school, now ferry. When God calls you to go to Bible school, listen, I've seen people, they are called by God. They know they will end up as a pastor. But when you ask them, what do you want to study in university? They say, law. Some say, engineering. Or pekosa osunya. Mi papa man respect. We are not here for respect. We are here for what God says. Where we can take the kingdom. May you come to the place in life. When you are proud to be a pastor, proud to be a prophet, and you can say, I am a prophet of God, and you are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, come and clap your hands, scream like your voice is yours. Praise. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach. And when I say for this purpose, I'm talking about destroying the works of the devil with preaching. Destroying the works of the devil with prophecy. Destroying the works of the devil with the word of God. You know the world has confused us completely. They've confused us. They make us think until we do social services. We are not doing the work of God. Listen, our church has a school in Bogatanga. The school is big, nice, with over 1,300 children. But listen, that is not my ministry. God did not call me to build school. He called me to preach. They should take all these offerings they are receiving and build hospital. That is not our job. Our job is to take the offerings and preach. You can't even clap. Uh, uh, uh. They should take all these offerings and open orphanages. Jesus didn't have one. Come on, scream it like I'm talking to you. Hey! Hallelujah. For this purpose. Oh, all these, all these churches and pastors are there, and there's crime in Ghana. Are we B and I? Listen, Jesus was alive, and during his crucifixion, there were two thieves, one to his right, one to the left. Look at you, you can't even scream. Hey! Now, now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. At the end of the month, at the end of the month, my church, they pay me to preach. Government of Ghana pays somebody who works in BNI to take care of security. Why are you blaming me for security issues? 
Listen. One day, you know, somebody asked me, ah, but you, you are old like this, you still jump like that. No, it is not only the Holy Ghost. So. I came from Bogatanga today. In the morning before I came, I was on my elliptical machine for nearly one hour exercise. No, before I moved. That's why I still have strength. But what I'm saying is this, people. The church, we have our purpose. Some of you in the church will be the BNI. Some of you will be the CIA. Some of you will be the FBI. Some of you will work as engineers. Some of you will work as doctors. But as for we, the knights of the microphone, our job is to preach. And when I preach, I have fulfilled my purpose. Somebody said, for this purpose. For this purpose. The church is getting confused. We don't even know what God has called us for. We see preaching as nonsense. But the most important human being on earth was a preacher. Go to 20 people. Give them a high five. Tell them you are a preacher. Hey, yeah. You are a preacher. Now, so something by early afternoon I discarded. Then I did a second one, you know. And by late afternoon I discarded it. Then I did a third one. And as for third, you can never get it wrong. So tonight I'm bringing you the third one. And in the third one, what I said was, if he came to destroy the works of the devil through the agency of the preaching, Lord, give me one text of scripture where I can quickly run through the things he came to destroy up to the time when he said to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I want all those six things in one text. Preach the gospel to the poor. Heal the brokenhearted. Preach deliverance to the captives. Recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I need the six in one text. And the Lord led me to Luke chapter 13 and the verse number 10. That Jesus was teaching in one of their synagogues. This was a teacher who didn't go to teacher's training college, but he could teach. He didn't go to a school of theology, but he could teach. Now, so here is Jesus teaching in one of their synagogues. And the Bible said, and behold, verse number 11, there was a woman who came, and the Bible said she had the spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. Preaching the gospel to the poor, by the time somebody is bowed together for 18 years and cannot lift herself up, I promise you she will be poor. There is no way you cannot lift up yourself and prosper. The woman was poor, and Jesus came to preach the gospel to the poor. My Bible said in the verse number 12 that when Jesus saw her, he called her unto him, and he said, Woman, thou art loose from this that infirmity. Ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus was sitting in the synagogue, 
He was not looking on the front row where the rich people sit. He was not looking for where the gold was. He was not looking for where the silver was. He was not looking for where the diamonds were. He was looking for people who cannot lift up themselves. He was looking for the poor, the broke, the people that were wounded and could not lift up themselves. Lo and behold, he saw a woman that could in no wise lift up herself. Poor! He said, woman, thou art loose from this thy infirmity. Anybody here today who cannot lift up yourself, you cannot lift up your head, you cannot lift up your face, your family cannot be lifted up, your business cannot be lifted up, your life cannot be lifted up. I command you today, you are loose from your infirmity. You are loose from your infirmity. If you can shout, your freedom has come. Thou art loose. The Bible said to preach the gospel to the poor. And the gospel means good news. Can you imagine for 18 years you cannot lift up yourself? That means for 18 years you haven't seen the sun. For 18 years you don't know what Bishop Takia boy's face looks like. Because your head is on the ground. And somebody tells you now you are loosed. Your head not being lifted up is a sign of failure. It's a sign of shame. That is why I'm addressing somebody's failure tonight. I'm addressing somebody's shame tonight. May God be your glory and the lifter up of your head. You will lift up your head one more time. Arise, shine, your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Lift up your head, all ye kids. Come on, shout it. The preacher, the preacher, the preacher, the preacher, the preacher, the preacher. The other day, I was, I had something like a magnet. On my shirt. I still have one here. It holds up my color. They call it a color steel. This thing is a magnet. If it falls to the ground now, it will immediately look for where another steel object is and it will go and bond with the steel because it's a magnet. A true preacher, when he appears in an environment, the first person to locate is the poor. The poor. The poor. A true preacher does not get into a congregation and is looking for a rich man, a professor, a doctor, a lawyer. He's looking for the poor. May you begin to gravitate towards the poor. May you begin to gravitate and navigate towards the poor. May your ministry find the poor. May your ministry find the sick. May your ministry find the broken. Come on, shout it, yes! Jesus! There were many wealthy people there. He didn't call anybody. He called the woman to preach the gospel to the poor. To heal the broken hearted. I can imagine a woman, 18 years, bowed together, can in no wise lift up herself because the devil has bound her. 18 years. Sad, depressed. Why? She's broken hearted, she's bound. And the woman, no joy. The Bible said when Jesus touched her, she was made straight and she glorified God. That means for 18 years, no glorifying God. Oh, there is somebody here under the sound of my voice. For 18 years, no laughter, no smile. For 18 years, when people are laughing, you don't even know why they are laughing. But today, when God turns your captivity, you shall be like them that dream. And God will put a song on your tongue and put laughter in your mouth. Am I hearing your shout tonight?
broken hearted. The broken hearted is somebody whose heart is broken to shivers, shattered beyond recovery. You know, today we're sitting in a car, and one of my daughters was sitting by me. She had, she had lost the mother. And then there was a, a, a gentleman sitting in front, and we're talking about this girl who lost the mother, her father, who is now a widower, and sometimes finds it difficult to behave like the way the rest of us behave. When I was talking to the pastor, I told him, I said, Pastor, what that pastor who lost his wife and this young lady sitting by me who lost their mother, what they go through and what they feel, people like you, this pastor, can never feel it. I said, me, I can feel it because my family has gone through tragedy before. Listen, there are some of us when we read a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief, it's not Isaiah 53, it is Eastwood Anaba. I told him, I said, sometimes I have friends who get fed up with me because they say when we are meeting as pastors, we don't see Pastor Eastwood there. And I told him, I said, Pastor, you know why they don't see me? Sometimes when I go there, some of the jokes they are cracking make me angry. I don't know what they are laughing about. I don't know what they are happy about. Because you know what? Every day when I wake up, I'm breaking up inside. I remember what happened to me on a daily basis. And I'm just trying to hold my intestines together. And here am I surrounded by friends who forget about yesterday as if it never existed. Listen, I'm sure a woman who could in no wise lift up herself, maybe her husband is dead. Maybe the husband has divorced her because which of you men will marry a woman who could in no wise lift up herself? How can she give an offering in the night? Because mommy, Ebia, I'm not sure. Maybe I am a Jew or the whole Jesus. When you are coming, she says, No way for Satan. When you are coming, she says, No way for Satan. Listen, the people you don't understand in life, they are not crazy. Something happened to them and they are just struggling to stay alive. This woman is just struggling, struggling, struggling to stay alive. Nimmo, internal bleeding. Oh, but there was one person in the room. <laughs> Who could be touched with the feeling of her infirmities? Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the one that said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. If you've never been through what I've seen, don't judge me. Mm. Sometimes I don't greet you, not because of paranoia, but because I don't even know where I am. Mm. 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 I told my wife, I said, Pearl, one day when I'm 60 years old, don't celebrate. I don't want a party. Because there's nothing to celebrate. My pain was too much for me to be celebrating anything. I said, just leave me like that. Mommy, turn the baby in Jenny home. 
my wife understood understood it. Oh, beyond any philosophy, I didn't know what said. This woman is walking about only papani. Maybe she used to be a very beautiful woman, prekupe. Maybe very intelligent woman, prekupe. Maybe this woman was a very sociable woman, prekupe. And Jesus called it the spirit of infirmity. So the Bible says he was sent to preach deliverance to the captives. This woman was in captivity. Her nervous system has held her captive. Muscles have held her captive. Her skeletal system has held her captive. And Jesus came to preach deliverance to the captives. I asked myself a question. I said, who put this woman in captivity? The Lord said three things put her in captivity. I said, what are the three things that put her in captivity? The Lord said, disease. Demons. Huh? Disease. Demons. The devil. I said, Lord, I understand disease. I understand demons. Then the Lord said, but the third one, you don't know. You see, it is not the disease that held a captive. It is not the demons that held a captive. It is the third D. The third. I said the third. The third. The first D, disease. Second D, demons or devil. The third D, doctrine. Doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. When Jesus healed a woman, the ruler of the synagogue did not talk about the disease. He didn't talk about the demons. He talked about doctrine. There are six days in the week wherein you must be healed. In those days, come and be healed. But on the Shabbat, it is not permitted. Listen, there is something which is more dangerous than disease, more dangerous than devil. They call it Doctrine. Doctrine. And she and Yanum. A dear a queen. And ya ya dear. And ya a damon. A pama nipa. Emra nipa. A shato. The laws of men. The doctrines of men. But for the doctrines of men. Your sins would have been forgiven by now. But for the doctrines of men, your diseases would have been healed by now. But for the doctrines of men, your poverty would have been taken away by now. And you would have been a prosperous man. But the doctrines and the traditions of men, today I free you from the bondage of every doctrine. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ has set you free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Come on, shout, I am free. He has sent me to preach the gospel to the poor. Heal the broken hearted. Preach deliverance to the captives. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Here is a woman who is bruised. Economically bankrupt. Socially rejected. The woman's life is finished. She's finished. Where can she go? In this condition. When Jesus told a woman. Thou art loose. From this that infirmity. He touched her. The Bible said immediately. She was made straight. I read somewhere in the Bible. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday. Today. And forever. The same Jesus. 
the same Jesus the same Jesus walking in this building right now and I see him touching you and I see you becoming straighter your moral life is becoming straighter your financial life is becoming straighter your emotional life is becoming straighter your marriage life is becoming straighter your business is becoming straighter your academic life is becoming straighter receive the anointing to become straight right now receive another touch receive another touch receive another touch from the hand of the same Jesus from the hand of the same Jesus Jesus is touching you tonight Jesus is touching you tonight come and shout the same Jesus in a certain condition. You know what people, when we cast out devils, people have trouble with us. Why are they talking about devil, devil, devil? They should just educate these people. Education. Can you educate demon? What's up? Sometimes I'll tell marriage counselors, stop the counseling and cast out devil. Some of the couple, when they sit in front of you, get up and look at the two of them and say, now you two devils in the name of Jesus, I rebuke every demon in both of you. Come out in the name of Jesus. Listen. The way you are behaving in your family is not a temperamental issue. It's a demonic issue issue. You have a demon. It's a devil. There is some kind of anger which is not a weakness. It's a demon. Some kind of sexual desire is not a weakness. It is a devil. Even some kind of food eating is not a demon. It is not a weakness. It's a demon. Yesterday I was home when they brought me two balls of fufu. I asked the lady who brought it if I eat these two wouldn't you conduct deliverance for me I said bring a plate carry half of it away from me at this my age I don't need this amount of carbohydrate in my system that is what Paul said their belly is their God. And by the time your belly is your God, you are an idol worshiper. And your pot belly is your idol. Every man, look at your idol. Bosom, bosom, your bosom, bosom. Touch a man's stomach and say, kill this demon, kill this idol. Come on, scream! had never told a woman it was Satan that had bound them. You know, sometimes we get worried when people tell us the thing is a demon. But you see, he came to recover sight to the blind. You are a good student. The woman could not see. She couldn't lift up her head to look. She's blind. The scribes and the Pharisees and the ruler of the synagogue could not see the demon that was harassing the woman. Jesus Christ had to open their eyes. May God open your eyes. May God. And, and prophet, if it was you, a prophet, who told the woman, this is your disease. It's not a medical condition. It's a demon. The next day you'll be in the news. Dr. Nyami call, Nyamiche calls chronic arthritis demonic. 
Then they say, how can a man with double doctorate be so ignorant? Listen, double doctrine does not make you enlightened about spiritual things. Jesus stood there and said, I know the one who made this woman this way. It is the devil. He said, it's not even a demon, it's the devil. This particular woman, Satan did not delegate her punishment. He executed it himself. Listen, Uni. There are some people and some things. When Satan is going to attack, he doesn't send a demon. He goes himself. This woman was one of the cases. I believe she was a potential candidate of the kingdom. Can I end up like this? To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The people at the projection, do me a favor. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord is Luke chapter 4 verse 19 but I need you to put it on the screen in the message translation of the Bible for me message translation do they have it message find it from anywhere you can find before I go to Bogatanga and find it because Bogatanga is a church Unimsef Bogatanga is the center of technology. Hey, Bogatanga, by a check, by me chain. Mona Musi mo one cry. Ena Mona Musi mo niye biye. Ena yeye wo sumo message translation. Somebody help me. William, can they get it at all? If they can't, let me continue with my message. I know. No, I know what is there. To announce this is God's year to act. I know it. It's because of all these people who read daily graphic and not Bible. That is what I want. Translation was so at the end of the for you. A diamond in Eddie or more happy. You see, oh, a computer problem, baby. A diamond. Now, moving on, William, if you people can see it, just come and tell me you see it, then I'll know what to do. Oh, they can't find it, they can't see it. Now, push it up. Now, watch this. To set the burden and the battered free. To announce this is God's year to act. Now, stay here. 17 years. The devil's years to act. 17 years. Your enemies years to act. 17 years for sickness to act. But the 18th year. That is your jubilee. I hear the sound of the jubilee. I hear the sound of your freedom. I hear the sound of your liberty. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The 18th year. Or thinking. 18 has a word. Every figure in the Bible has an equivalent of a word in the Hebrew thinking. And 18 is a Hebrew word hi. Like when you say hi to somebody. But they spell it like C-H-A-I. Translation, literation. If you read it, you may think it is chai. But it is hi. Hi means life. For 17 years, this woman was practically dead. Her family was practically dead. Her business was practically dead. 
18th year, Jesus looked at the woman and he said, Hi. That means life is entering you. Receive life, your 18th year. You are coming alive. Something is about to come to life. Hi. I want you to give 10 people a high five and tell them, Hi, life. Hi. 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 Come on, shout like your voice is yours, present. It is God's here to act. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, scream! Hallelujah! Now, what's this? What's this? Your 18 years may not be literal 18 years, but 18 months. Maybe 18 weeks. Maybe 18 days. But I smell some 18. Oh, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, to announce this is God's year to act. Your enemies have acted, the devil has acted, nature has acted, but I announce that this is God's year to act. This is God's year to act. This is God's year to act. I see your breakthrough coming. This is God's year to act. Come on, shout it! Now, now, stand to your feet. Stand up. I was standing here. Those young men were singing. Somebody pull this pulpit here for me. Take it to the back. I need just about 15 minutes because today I've preached too long. Tomorrow I may preach shorter. Though I never... How can I travel all the way from Bogatanga? Come and preach short. And then that's it, my say. But I was sitting here and those young men were singing. I really enjoyed that song, The Double. And the Lord opened my eyes. And I saw an image of people, human beings, people. Not somewhere else in this building. And their hands were stretched like this. And they couldn't bring them back. Their hands were just like that. And I remember the king who took his hand in first John, sorry, first Kings 13 and tried to strike the young prophet. And the Bible said his hand froze and he could not pull it back. And the prophet prayed and the hand came down. And the Lord showed me. He said, there are people in this building who are bowed together. Their family, their life, their business, their future, their destiny. And they cannot straighten themselves out. He said, today, I will give them a sign. Watch this. He told Moses, I'll give you a sign. He said, Moses, put your hand in your bosom. And he put it there. He said, remove it. When he removed it, it became leprous. And he said, put it back. He put it in and it became clean. He said, today, for a few seconds, somebody's hand will be frozen. He will try, she will try to put it down. It will not happen. But I will use your hand and put down the person's hand. And he said, this will be a sign that after today, any aspect of their life that could not be lifted up, I will lift it up. Somebody is about to receive a miracle of the lifting up. He said, if any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. Somebody's about to be raised. <laughs> Lift up your hand that way. Proshekebisha. Look at me as I'm talking to you. Keep your hand there, look at me. I tell everybody I'm not a prophet. 
But what I see, I see. And what I hear, I hear. In the next about 30 seconds, some of you with your hands where it is, you can put it down. You cannot. And it will be a sign that by the time the hand comes down again, when you get back home, anything that could not rise up, anything that could not be lifted, it will be lifted. Amen. Keep your hand in that way. And the Lord said to me right now, I will call the rain of my spirit to come upon my people. And when the rain comes upon them, that sign shall take place. And I hear the rain is falling on not less than 50 people. Oh, Jesus. Jesus! 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 Open the floodgates of heaven. Let the rain come. Poof. Take it. It's happening. God is giving you a sign. Anybody standing anywhere, attempt lifting up your hand, attempt putting it down. If you sense your hand is not coming down, you are trying, but it's not coming down. Come to Brother Israel here quickly. Come to me. You are standing anywhere. You want to put the hand down, but the hand is not going down. Start coming to me. I have ministered for so many years. You don't have to fake this. Make sure what you are bringing is real. Listen, before you bring them to me, and before you come to me, try your best to put the hand down. If you cannot, then you come to me. Try your best to put it down. Madam, put your hand Holy one, I worship you. You are God of by yourself. You are God of by yourself. Somebody scream! All creation will shout your name for you are God of God. You're such a Lord for who you are. I bless your name for who you are. I worship you. You are God of yourself. name of Jesus. I will anoint your hand. When the hand goes down, anything in your life that is stiff, I command it to be straight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, come on, shout it. Come on, shout it. Listen, listen, listen. Nyam and a friend. It is God who said, Watch this, watch this. This one, if this one is surprising you, there are people in the building. Attempt turning your neck, you will realize you can't turn. Attempt doing something, you will realize you cannot. If you cannot turn that neck right now, after I said it, start coming to me. Start coming to me. The Lord says, stay here and finish with that before you move. If you are standing, you were trying to turn your neck and you cannot come to me. These are the people 
that cannot discover their purpose, they can't discover where they are going. But when I lay my hands on you, you will turn the neck again. And that says the Lord, your life will turn in the direction it's supposed to go. What is happening to you, sir? What's happening? I can't turn my head. I can't. I can't see. I can't turn my head. I can't turn it. I can't turn it. I can't turn it. Bring it. It's there. Now watch this. I'm going to touch you. Your neck will turn. Take it. Now. Bring him back to me. Bring him back. Bring him. Bring him. I'm speaking English. Gentlemen, look at me. Turn your neck. Come on, give a big clap and a shout of victory. Leave him. Now, this life that is in captivity, turn. Lift him up. has released you. From today, your life will turn in the direction it must turn by the hand of God in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Gentlemen, look at me. You see, Ben and Sue. Come in. Grazie. Turn your neck. Turn your neck. Turn it. I'll come back to you. Come here. Turn it. It can't. Look at me. Come. Father, a life turns in the direction it must go. Receive it. Now. Look at me. Turn your neck. You are loosed. Oh, glory. Jesus. Wow. Come here. Come here. Come here. Put your hand on. Let me see. You are free. Take it. Come here. Put it down. You can. Huh? My muscles are locked. Their arms are locked. I can't put them below this level. When you were coming, was it like this? Where's the oil? Now, put them down. Come on, give a big clap and a shout of victory. Now, listen to me. Anything that bound your life, I determine and declare from today you are free. Take it. Gentlemen, what's happening to you? Actually, I tried to bring down my hand. It was difficult as I was standing at the back. It was just stuck like that. So I took forward. Put it down. Lift it up. Now you are free. Come here. This one. The lady. What? Is that what? Your hand is in oil. Leave Madam, my hand, my look at me. Madam, look at me. What's happening to your hand? I can't bring it down. You can't bring it down. Try it. Father, 
Now her life will be straight. She will fulfill purpose. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down. Lift it up. Lift it up. Your freedom is tied up to the freedom of your hand. I command every principality, every power that holds your life in bondage to lose your hand. Spirit, I did as one day. I was sitting there. What I saw, you didn't see. It's just like what the doctor sees, you don't see. What the lawyer sees in a case, you don't see. When it comes to pastors, what we see, when you don't even see, you say, hey, I'm a You see? Gentlemen, come to me. Put it down. Take care. Oh, Jesus. Take it. Young lady, come. Lady. Okay. All right. Now give me everybody on the stage. I need the answer. Ah. But keep this lady for me. I will only release her when her hand is down. Take it. Leave it. Let him go. Ah. Take it. Chukuna guamarele. When you heal, you heal completely. Chuku maro himo Isi kandula Chuku na kwa marele When you heal you heal completely Wonderful. Bring him. Oh, Jesus. You've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. If I had ten thousand tongues, you still would be enough.
you are about to eat. <laughs> Me prophet too. But what I see, I see. What I hear, I hear. What I know, I know. Man of God, there is a feast. Everybody sit down. There is a feast. Prophet, you can stand. There is a feast in this room right now. Yeah. Now, watch this, watch this, watch this. In the next 20 seconds, Jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. The prophet said in the last days there shall be a famine not of bread or food but of the word of God. Today appetite for the word of God is close to zero. And that is because the raw word of God, we are not preaching it again. Today, now in the next 10 seconds some of you are going to eat fresh Bread from heaven. Now, who do you see? Tnasi. Because you see, one Tnasia. One Tiasia. Tnasi. Sit down. Tnasi. You know what? Some of you are sitting there where you are. In your mouth, in the next five minutes, five seconds, you will feel like there is bread flour in your mouth. At the set, pan one. And be papa. And some of it you would taste it like the flour. And you will smell it as if it's some tea bread somebody has put in an oven. The Lord is telling me anybody who can smell that thing and taste that thing in your mouth, after today, you will become a supernatural preacher. Now, watch this. Somebody said, But what is a supernatural preacher? There are people who preach because they have learned how to preach. There are others who preach because God has put a word in their mouth. The ones who preach because God has put a word in their mouth, they are the supernatural preachers. Lift up your finger. Take it and touch your tongue. Touch your tongue. Lift up your hand. Wave it to Jesus. Now, put everything down. No noise in the building. Kill the organ. Kill everything. Kill everything. Lift up your right hand. Taking a deep breath. Taking a deep breath five times. Two. And the third time. I wish I had no noise in the building. If you are sitting by somebody and the person is making noise, stop the person. If you put your shoe in their mouth, they will stop the noise. <laughs> Lift up your hand. Oh, glory. Somebody put your shoe in the mouth of that person. Or you can put your head in their mouth. If they bite your head, you will learn a lesson. But lift up your hand. Taking a deep breath seven times. Oh, glory. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I made you take in that deep breath because I wanted you to smell it. If you are sitting somewhere and you can smell it, it's like some tea bread, some fresh bread from an oven. And in your mouth, it's as if you are chewing some, some, some bread which is not well baked. Some powder. It also tastes touchy. Get up and start coming to me. Preachers are being bold. When you come, stand in a line. Nobody should stand behind the other. Stand in a line. Nobody behind them. Nobody on the side. Stand behind somebody. Don't fake anything. I don't need you. Stand line. Some of you should know what I want by now. They should face me. You should know what I want by now. Where's Ben? Jesus. 
Father, we want preachers. We want preachers. We want preachers. Some of these people, in the next few years, you are looking at preachers and prophets. for something. Supernatural. Father, let your spirit. Somebody bring me four bottles of water, room temperature. Are you ready? You are ready? So holy are you God all creation call you God where is your We worship your majesty, awesome God, how great. What's happening to you? My truth is very bad. What's happening to you? What's happening to you? In my mouth, I can't. We can't hear the microphone, so the organ go down. Something in my mouth, I can't. Preach. What's happening to you? Feeling as if the whole thing coming running in my mouth, and it is still increasing. Feeling the taste of communion. What communion? Mouth. Communion is made of many things. The bread. Uh -huh. Now you are talking. What's happening? <laughs> your miracle. So shall my word be. It's like rain. I can't lay hands on all of you. Take it. Awesome God. How great you are. You are God. Mighty are your me. 